This is Ottawa, Canada's capital city. The time, September police interrupted a raid made in desperation by members of the Soviet embassy staff on the apartment of a Russian code clerk who had escaped from the embassy with top secret documents. Documents which were the key to the capture of a Soviet spy ring, concentrating on the theft of US and Canadian atomic secrets. Igor Gozenko, the man who turned over those critical documents, has in the years since been living with his family somewhere in Canada. His whereabouts known only to a handful of Canadian government officials, Gozenko is a man in hiding, living in constant fear of discovery and death at the hands of the Russians. Even in these idyllic surroundings, where he lives under an assumed name. In this film, that assumed name will be Milik. Chemin pour Sainte Marguerite. Do you know the road to Sainte Marguerite? Straight up this road. About two miles. We left our car down there. We're hunting rabbits. Merci. Street near your parents' house. We're walking along hand in hand. It's spring. You can smell the fresh, warm wind from the south. You can see the river. Across the river, the Kremlin. It was a wonderful spring. And do you know what made it so wonderful? I never expected to feel anything. To fall in love. I would have laughed. We were all so numb and worn out from working and fighting. 
to fall in love. But we did. Yes, we did. Do you think people here would understand how we got married in a register's office by some middle-aged woman? No ring, no honey. We didn't even see each other again for 10 days. And only one wedding present. A bottle of French cognac from Trubetsky. <laughs> <laughs> you would never tell me how he got it. He always managed to get things. I wonder what happened to him. Isn't it funny? I was thinking of him last night. This is the past. We have no past. Yes, we have. You must forget it. I want the children to know someday. I want them to know who we really are. Not yet. Let them grow up a little. Mommy! In a little while, Right. <laughs> what a story we could tell them. Yes. Tell me, Volop, what did you expect Canada to be like? Who lives here? Where? In this district. Mostly workers. Where are the workers' houses? We are passing them now. How long have you been in Canada, Chef Talk? Sixteen months. Then you'll be going home at the end of this year. Probably. You must be anxious to get home. Of course. Of course.
We will discuss your work. Chetak, wait in your office. Sit down, Olo. You are here as assistant cipher clerks to the military attaché. You will be so designated in all your contacts. To all appearances, Chertak is your senior and superior. You will share Chertak's apartment. Each day you will come to the embassy with Chertak. You will leave with him at night. Tomorrow evening, you will dine here. We are having a lecture on the results of the Berlin Conference. And I'm sure that you will wish to attend. Of course. What did they tell you about your work? That you will give me complete instructions. You will be working under my direct orders. Do you understand? Of course. I know that people from your department are liable to be rather independent. That is possible. You know why you've been sent here. Not completely. Who is it? Igor Kuzenko. Does the name mean anything to you? No. Who is Kuzenko? In 1945, Kuzenko was code clerk to the military attaché here in Ottawa. One night, Kuzenko stole from the embassy a large number of telegrams, reports, and other papers. Naturally, you would not have heard about him in Moscow. By this treacherous action, Guzenko destroyed a number of valuable contacts within the Canadian government and led to the arrests of a network of valuable agents carefully developed for the purpose of gaining information about the construction of atomic weapons in this country in the United States. Now, does the name Igor Guzenko mean anything to you? It is beginning to. In Japan, quite recently, an important gentleman in our own department ran off to the Americans with valuable information. Then there was a man named Petrov in Australia. There may be others who are thinking of turning traitor. It is important that we discourage them by demonstrating that the penalty for treason is always death. Where is Guzenko? Somewhere in Canada. Somewhere? We have to find him. How long will it take? Not long, there are ways. We will talk again tomorrow. Chertok. Chertok knows why you are here. Anyone else? As far as you are concerned, no one. Chertak will show you where you will live. write in English. Oh, Victor Collier will put it in good English for you. Oh, Collier. I'm late. Do you have to meet him again today? He's bringing new proofs of the book. I have to return these to him. You're worried. These meetings with Collier. Katja, I have to work through someone. But people know that Collier handles your work. Oh, he's very careful. I have to take chances. 
We knew that when I took the documents from the embassy. It's the only way. Be careful. Drive slowly. The roads are very icy. <laughs> That's more like a Canadian housewife. Collier and Grant, good morning. Mr. Collier, one moment, please. Oh, Mr. Collier, there's a call for you. I'll be back at four, Miss Lawrence. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Collier just stepped out. He'll be back at four. Very well, I'll tell him. I uh, had to shake someone off in Montreal. I'm not absolutely sure, but I think I was being followed. Are you sure? No, not absolutely. Victor, I can tell you I'm afraid again. I thought I had become accustomed to living like this. I was wrong. It's coming back, the old fear. I keep thinking of the others that they killed. Trotsky, Reese, Krivitsky. Krivitsky in a hotel room in Washington. But you felt like this before and nothing's happened? But you were followed today. But I'm not sure. Maybe it was my imagination. Maybe. But this should cheer you up. Here's the contract for the English rights for the novel. Oh. You'll have to sign all three copies. This Collier is no fool. He lost our man here. It is impossible to guess where he went. Obviously, Collier and Gruzenko prearranged their meetings in a different place each time. They are very clever but not clever enough. Sit down. I am making arrangements to introduce you to Guzenko. What are the arrangements? Are you getting impatient? I'm ready to work. You are impatient. That's good. This is a photograph of Guzenko's wife. 
was taken in 1944. The other is Guzenko. It also is 10 years old. Uh, he may have made some attempts to disguise himself. It does not matter. This is a file on Guzenko. He has a weakness. Do you know what it is? No. He thinks he has a mission, a purpose in life. So do I. Yours is different. Guzenko is educating people about Russia. You are going to write Guzenko a letter. A letter? In care of his publisher, Kalyan. It will reach him. You are going to tell him that you wish to follow his inspiring example. You will say that you are uh, disillusioned with the Soviet government, that you are in a position to take valuable information from the embassy, information about... Never mind. I will dictate the letter. Sit here. We must use exactly the right terms. Do you have a pen? Yes. Then use yours. Now, how do we begin this? Dear Igor, dear comrade. Right. Dear Guzenko, use Russian script, please. Dear Guzenko. <laughs> Sorry, was there something you wanted, Miss Lawrence? No, Mr. Collier. I was just wondering if there was something else. Uh, yes. You might ask Mr. Ridgely to come in, will you please? Yes, sir. Miss Lawrence said you wanted to see me. Yes, I have a translation job for you, Ridgely. Russian. About Gazenko? To Gazenko. A letter. Hmm. Well, <laughs> this is a queer one. Yes, Ridgely? It purports to come from the Russian embassy. What does it say? Postmark Ottawa, all right. The writer of this letter claims that he hates communism and wants to get out of the embassy. He says if Kuzenko is willing to meet him, Guzenko is to place a personal ad in the Ottawa Journal saying, Mary, mother ill, please come home, John. Swanville, three seven, please. Deposit thirty cents, please. We. Oui? 
Hello? Peter Mealy, please. Who is it, please? Mr. Lin. Monsieur Lin. Oh, one minute, please. Hello? This is Mr. Lin speaking. We have just received a delivery which we believe will interest you. When can I see it? Would this afternoon be convenient? Yes. About four o'clock? Four o'clock. Something is wrong. It's probably news about the book. No, he would have waited till Wednesday. Could be a magazine wanting an article. No, something is wrong. Ah, nothing's wrong. We've both been getting too nervous. Nothing's going to happen. Where do you meet Carly at this time? At the Mount Royal Hotel. We've set up a new system. I telephone him after I check in, tell him my room number. But if someone isn't in, they would know the room number. We fool them. Today, I add three to each digit of the number of the room. If it is, for instance, 516, I give it as 849. <sighs> You see, I had excellent training at the Red Army Intelligence School. So did they. Front and X seven four five zero one. Good afternoon, Collier and Grant. Mr. Collier. One moment, please. Mr. Collier, call for you on line number one. Hello? Six, five, four, seven. Six, five, four, seven. Right.
mezzanine fee. Something wrong? I can't tell. You'll have to be the judge of that. What is it? This came in the mail this morning. Try this. This is so obvious. They know I'm on to their tricks. I have been part of their organization. You think this is too crude? Crude, yes, it is. If it is supposed to be a trap. you think there's a possibility that this man might try to break away from him? There is a possibility, yes. What makes you think so? I broke away. House detectives, madam. Well, even if you are house detectives, you can't push into my room like this. What do you mean by this? I'm going to call the desk if you We're don't. We're very sorry, madam. Well, you should be. It, uh, it won't be necessary to call a desk. You see, we were, uh, we were told a sneak thief had been seen entering this room. A sneak thief? Yes, yes. Uh, apparently somebody made a mistake. Well, I should say. Uh, excuse us, madam. What's the number I got? Igor, from one Canadian citizen to another, don't be carried away. Remember, this may be a trap. I I'm not forgetting. Let us answer the letter. All right. I put an ad in the personal column. In the Ottawa Journal? Yes. If there's any response, I'll let you know. If not, we'll meet on Wednesday as planned. Yes. I should have the galley proofs by then. 
I'll have my set corrected. Think it over. I will. I'd talk to Cathy about this if I were you. Oh, yes, I will. Give her my regards. Thank you. I'll let you know what the police think of the letter. I don't think they will be able to find out much. We'll see. Goodbye. Goodbye, Victor. Answer? It is here in the newspaper. Probably placed there by the Canadian police. It does not matter. My plan allows for attempted police interference. You will kill Guzenko in spite of that. Meanwhile, an attempt to remove Guzenko in Montreal failed yesterday. We will take no further chances of alarming the zinc. Your Montreal apparatus is clumsy, Chertok. I will have to report. The girl heard Guzenko on the phone. I could... Never mind. Well, Polov, are you still impatient? I have nothing to do. You will be working soon. Good. When? In a few days. We will move slowly. It is bad to try to pull your fish out too quickly. Eh? <laughs> <One up. laughs> I thought it advisable to bring Inspector Boucher along. We've gone through that letter you received, Mr. Uh... Milik. Milik. Precaution. Good idea. Now, about that letter. What did you find out? We checked it against uh, handwriting specimens of the members of the Russian embassy. We got them through uh, immigration forms and other official papers. The man who wrote that letter is named Sergei Volo. Does that mean anything to you? No. The Russian embassy carries him as an assistant court clerk to the military attaché. He arrived in this country nine days ago. And wrote to me almost immediately? Apparently he did. That seems... days. Cannot have seen much of Canada. What difference does it make? I thought he might have seen enough to understand that they had lied to him about countries outside the Iron Curtain. You can see a lot in nine days. How long did it take you to find out that they had lied? Not long, but... You have not heard from him again? No. Maybe he couldn't write again. They might be watching him. Everything's maybe, might. I can't be sure. I just can't be sure. What do you want me to do? My official position is hands off. The RCMP can't intervene. 
There hasn't been a crime committed. Or attempted. No. What is your unofficial position? Unofficially, you understand, the RCMP might find it interesting to see what happens if uh, Volov communicates with you again. That's unofficial? Yes. Will you help me if I need help? Yes. Most international conferences have observers. Official and otherwise. Montreal, Frontenac, 74501. Mr. Victor Collier. Mr. Collier? Yes. I am the man who wrote to your friend. I wish to meet him. Yes? Perhaps? I will meet him in Montreal tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock at the entrance of the Montreal Park. Tell Guzenko he has nothing to worry about. No. What? I want to see you first. Impossible. I will meet you here in Montreal tomorrow. I must see Gusenko. I'll be at the men's hat counter at Morgan's department store at 11 o'clock. Why are you interfering? I am a very good friend of Gusenko's. I must see you first. How will I know you? I am 40 years of age, 5 feet 11 and a half, 190 pounds. I'll be wearing a black overcoat, yellow wool scarf, gray felt hat, and horn-rimmed spectacles. I'll be looking at the men's hats. Who told you to do this? No one. I'll meet you at 11 o'clock, Mr. Voloff. Thank you. 
I help you? No. Thank you. I told you, you must see me. Who are you? I am Gozenko's publisher, also his friend. How do I know that? You called me at my office. That proves nothing. You could be with the government or with the secret police. We don't have any secret police. Where is Gozenko? He is at home just now. If you want to break away from the embassy, I can help you. I want to see Gusenko. Where is he? In a labor camp? A labor camp? We don't have such things. I told you Gusenko is at home. He's free. He's happy. He's glad he broke away. Hey, he you wants you to... No. No, thank you. Why doesn't he meet me? Why is it necessary? I can assure you you'll be well received. Any information you can give will be well appreciated. I will bring information, papers, when I meet Guzenko. You have my word. I don't know about you. But I do know about Guzenko. Tell him I will be here in Montreal tomorrow morning. I will walk through Bon Secours Market at 10 o'clock. I will be carrying a newspaper under my left arm. Guzenko will follow me. Fifteen paces behind. Follow you? Where? He will follow me until I stop walking. If Guzenko is free, he will meet me. All right, children, let's go. <laughs> when did you come? I watched you ski down the hill. <laughs> it is? Pretty good. I saw Dean take the spill. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. You go up the hill once more. And, Jean, you go with the boys. <laughs> Peter? Inspector. Gotcha, this is Inspector Boucher, the mounted police. How do you do, Miss Milik? Can we talk? <laughs> Surely. Excuse us, Miss Milik. I saw Volov this morning. What was he like? Dark, pretty tall, but stocky. Powerful, 
fleshy face. I didn't like his eyes. They were cold, very cold. You had a bad impression of him. Very bad. I didn't like the way he talked either. What did he say? He said if you were free, you'd meet him. When? Tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock at Monsacor Market. He'll walk through. He wants you to follow him. Where? Until he stops walking. Wherever he goes. You know, for a Russian, he enjoys a lot of freedom. How could they let him go off to Montreal all by himself? Remember, he's court clerk to the military attaché. That means he's in Red Army intelligence. You could say that he was making contacts for his work. What about his superiors at the embassy? Wouldn't they know? Not necessarily. There might be several espionage networks operating independently. When I was in the embassy, there were about a dozen networks. Less now, I hope. Well, that's what Boloff might be able to tell us. And give us proof. You'll meet him then. I have not made up my mind. I still don't like this. I don't like it at all. How much protection could you give me? We can cover you in the market. And if we leave the market? I'll call your office in the morning. Goodbye, Kanga. Goodbye, Mr. Milik. Goodbye. Goodbye. stopped by anyone. You will use the other driver's license and identity card. No one is to know that you are going to Montreal tomorrow. What about Volov? If he is caught, the embassy will disclaim all responsibility. He has concocted this scheme all by himself. You will see that he completes the rendezvous. And you will bring him back here if you can. If I can. And if I cannot. Volov must not be taken by the Canadian police. Alive we can talk. Dead we can disclaim him. What about me? Volov, come into my office. You must not fail, Chertok. Do not even think of falling into the hands of their police. You will be an accomplice in a murder. This is a frontline mission. We will have one more review. I want to make sure that you understand exactly what you will do tomorrow. Warm enough? I am warm enough, Daddy. 
Good night. Good night. She woke up. I think she fell asleep again. Sometimes I wish I were a child again and did not have to think about politics and war. That there was not a man named Volov. If you decide there is no Volov. There is a Volov. There is a Volov, and he's going to be in Montreal tomorrow morning. He's going to walk through that market, and I'm supposed to follow him. And then, he may be a man like me, or he may be... for Montreal. Voilà. You will have Guzenko all to yourself. He may be armed. You can take care of that. People will know why Guzenko was killed. We want them to know, although we will deny everything energetically. You will come back after you have finished. That is all. One moment. I forgot something. That was taken in Leningrad last week. It arrived in the diplomatic pouch yesterday. With this. Your wife, Olof. A very pretty woman. What does she do? She is a member of the Central Committee. A very pretty woman. You must be very much in love with her. Uh, how long have you been married? Eight months. Well, as you can see, she is in the best of health. Your family, too, Chaitak. Excellent health from all reports. That was not necessary. I hope not. But it should be good for your morale to know that your families in Russia are well. It is time to go. Good luck, Chaitak. Steven a present. Bring one back with you. 
I will. That man, report to me. Left the market, walking east. Follow them slowly.
doesn't realize that ramp is the only exit from the island. They can't get away from us now. Zenko? Yes. Yes. You are Guzenko. You look heavier than in your photographs. Yes. My wife is a good cook. You live with your wife? And my children. At liberty? We are free. Perfectly free. We are Canadian citizens now. Would they... Would they grant me Canadian citizenship? I think so. How would they know I am not a spy? If you brought documents... How would they know the documents are not false? They would examine them. They would know. It is difficult for me to trust anyone with a gun. Names of Soviet agents operating in Canada today. Quickly, behind that tree, hide! How bad is it? Superficial wound. There'll be an ambulance here in a moment. Is the pain bad? It's all right. Tell me, when did you make up your mind to do this? Ten years ago. I was in the Red Army in 1944. We got to Vienna. I saw what it was like outside. And you waited ten years? For the right moment? Yes. Do you have a wife, a family back there? I was married in Moscow eight months ago. Oh, she's a member of the Central Committee. She can take care of herself. It was only through this marriage that I was able to get an assignment like this. You're going to be in good hands now. You must have played the part of a loyal communist very well, Volov. A good actor. There are more and more of us in Russia each year, Guzenko. No, nothing like that. About this motorboat. Yes, I think he'd like this. I'll take it. Will you wrap it as a gift, please? Yes, sir. Would you like to enclose a gift card? Yes, please.
Igor Gozenko. My name is Igor Gozenko. The incidents, locations, and characters have been changed to protect my family. But the motion picture you have just seen gives you some idea of what might happen to those who, like me, break with the masters of Russia. I must be constantly alert, constantly vigilant. My life is in danger at every moment, day and night. I'm looking forward to the day when all people everywhere, you and I and my family, live in a world of freedom without fear and suspicion. Then it will be possible for me to take off this hood and meet you face to face. Thank you.